All right, so I want to talk about PHP sessions, session management, and the sessions global super array in PHP. I have here two web pages, one called public and one called private. Right now, it's just a little bit of HTML. Uh, there's an anchor tag inside of here, and I can click on the link inside the public page to go to the private page. That's all it does. What I want to do is I want to keep track of who's trying to follow this link. I want to decide whether or not the link should show up. Uh, only let people who are logged in follow this link and get to the private page. That's what sessions do. HTTP itself is considered to be a stateless protocol. Stateless means there's no history, there's no memory. So if you click on a link to go from page one to page two, and then you click pink, click a link to go from page two to page three, the browser that's giving you page one, page two, page three is not remembering the fact that you've gone to page one, two, and three. It doesn't care where you've been. It just says, oh, you sent me a request for page three. Here's page three. Go ahead. Have a look. Now, PHP, on top of that, the script. With PHP we and other server-side programming languages, we want to be able to keep track of where users have been, what they're allowed to look at, what they're looking at right now, what they've looked at before. So to do that, we have to create a session. So a session you can think of as an array. Here's a list of possible variables and values that we're going to save. So it's probably going to be information about the user themselves, their ID or their uh, email address, or maybe a list of pages that they visited. So that's what sessions are. And the way they work is when you, from PHP, when you create a session, what you're actually doing is here I've got my uh, folder. So here's the MAMP folder. There's htdocs. That's our root web folder. There's a folder down here, temp. Inside the temp folder, there's a PHP folder. And these are session files. They are just basic text files. And every time you tell PHP, hey, I need to create a brand new session, what they'll do is they'll create a brand new session file. And then any information that needs to be saved in that session gets saved in that file. Now, this is done on the web server side. It's not done on the browser side. So not everybody can access it. It's hidden away in this temp folder where other people aren't allowed to access. Um, htdocs, that's all the public files. The temp folder is hidden away, so you can't get to it. Inside of here, that's where we store all the information about the user. And the way we know whether or not you making a request for one specific page, like here, if I made a request for the public.php page, if I want to know which files you're allowed to access, I'm going to get your session ID. And then I'm going to come over here and say, okay, here's your session ID. So that means this is the file that you're allowed to access. Well, how do I know that that session ID is tied to one particular browser? And that's because in the browser, if I come in here, if I inspect the page and we go into the application tab, we can come down here to the cookie section and there will be a cookie that is created with the session ID. So how do we create this session? How do we start this up? Well, in your web page, in your PHP page, you will have a command called session start. What this does is it will create the session ID if it doesn't exist. So when you come to a web page, the when I make a request for public.php from my browser, that request goes over to the web server. The web server says, oh, it's a PHP page, passes the request over to the PHP script. The PHP script runs this command, and it says, all right, let's check in the cookies. Let's see if there was actually a session ID cookie inside of there. We get that ID, and then we go over and we look in that temp folder. And we say, is there a session ID that matches the one that just came out of the cookie? No? All right, let's create a brand new session. Or if the cookie doesn't exist at all, let's create a brand new session. And then we send the cookie from the server back to the browser again. So if I come in here and look now, because I added this and the page reloaded, inside of localhost in my cookies folder, there is this 
cookie called PHP session ID, and there's the value, 53C406, blah, blah, blah. Come back in here, and there it is, 53C406, and so on. That is my session, and the size of the file right now is zero bytes. That means there's nothing saved inside of there. If I want to put something inside of there, I can use my session, super global array, and say, I'm going to create a variable called Bob inside there. It's going to be a string, and it's going to be five characters long. All right, I've saved it. Now this file is 16 bytes, so I've saved something in there. Let's open that with, and brackets isn't showing up in my list, so let's go down here and open it in brackets. There we go. And there it is, Bob which is a string, which is five characters long, and there is the value. So this has been saved inside this session file. I now have, I can close this, don't need this anymore. Inside of here, I now have a session variable called Bob with the value hello. If I go over to the private page, there's no PHP script on there right now. We're looking at the page, there's nothing on it here, so I want to have access to all the PHP session stuff, so I need to use this session start command. Very important to realize that any page, if you've got a website that's got a thousand pages on it, if you want to do something with sessions on that page, on any one of those pages, you have to invoke this command. This is the command that gives you access to the session information that will create the session file or look at the existing file if it's there. Because I've done that, now I can come down here and inside of here we'll create a PHP block and we will echo out the session that we called Bob. I save it and there it is. There's the value that was inside of it. Now on this private page, private.php, all we have done is called session start and then written out the variable. I haven't set it on this page. It was back on public.php. This is where we set it. If I change it over here, and I say it's now equal to Rick, when I go to the private page, now it says Rick. So we've changed the value inside of that session file, that little text file. And that's how sessions work. Just any time you create a session variable, it gets saved inside of that text file. Inside of the cookies, there it is. This is the session ID. That's basically the name of the file. There's a prefix. And in the httpd.conf file, the configuration file for the web server, you can actually change this. Or sorry, in the php.ini file, the uh, initialization file for PHP, you can change the name of this cookie if you want. In the uh, configuration file, you can also change the uh, name of the session, so the prefix that gets put on before the session ID if you want. Not important right now. What is important is the fact that you understand there's a cookie value, and this cookie becomes part of the file name, and inside that file name, that is where all the information about the user is going to be saved. All right, now I'm going to comment this out. We don't need that. Actually, if you want to get rid of a variable, you can say unset. This is a, a PHP thing if you want to get rid of a variable. If I go back to my public page, there we go. I've gotten rid of this session variable now from that file. Okay, so we have a page which is public and a link to click on to go to the private one. I want to prevent that. Oh, here's the error saying, hey, you don't have that Bob variable because we deleted it. Let's jump over and we can delete this. There we are. And back to the public variable, public page. All right. I want to only show this link to people who are allowed to do it. Now, I'm going to add another paragraph in here, and I am going to add an anchor tag to login. So I'm going to create a page, login.php. Okay. There's my link to login, 
And on my login page, all we want to do here is set something up. This is how logins will work. We create session start. Oops. There we go. So we have created a session for the user. If it didn't exist, if it does exist, we're accessing the file. And then we want to put something unique inside of there. So let's create a variable called user ID. There we go. That is the session user ID. We've put that just by typing this one line, we've put it into that session file. And now I want to send the person back to the public page. And with the header function in PHP, we can redirect them back to here. So we're changing the location to public.php. You click on the login, it takes you to this page, it creates the session variable, and then it sends the person back to the public page. So now they're logged in. All right, let's try it out. So click login, it took me to the login page, and it brought me back to here. And I bet if I look inside of that file, this one here, let's open it with brackets again. There it is, user ID, it's an integer, and that's the number. So we've done that, we've created the file now. Great. Okay, so clicking login creates that session variable. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna only show this link if the person is actually logged in. So, I will do an if statement, if is set session user ID. And if it is, show this link. There we go. So if is set session user ID, show this. Cool. Refresh the page. It shows up, but we know that it did have that file. We had the cookie, so that means there is a file, and inside that file, we looked at it a moment ago, and there is a user ID there. So I want to get rid of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kill that cookie. Cookie is gone from the browser, so when I refresh this page, hey, my link's gone because my session disappeared. If I look at this now, there's a different number, 1D0678. This is a different session. A brand new session has been created for me because I got rid of the cookie, so there was no way for PHP to connect my browser with that session file. So it created a brand new one. The link is not here anymore because my session's new which means I haven't clicked on this to add in that file. If I click login, okay, now I'm back. Now I get the go to the private page because that is now, that user ID is now inside of here. Well, let's do it again. Let's delete it, refresh the page. Cool. That's the first part of the security is making sure they've got the session user ID to show this link, but there's nothing stopping me from coming up here and saying private.php. Hey, I'm on the private page now. So we have to protect this page. We have to protect this one. We've gotten rid of the link to come here, but if somebody knows the URL, they can just type it in. So let's fix that. Over inside of private, session start. So it checks to see if the cookie exists. Um, what we'll do inside of here is, sorry, inside of the private page, what I want to do is I want to require this session.php page. I'm going to put all the work of checking to make sure if the person's allowed to be on this page inside of that other file. So we'll say require once, and it's going to be session.php. There we go. Refresh. Nothing's happening because there's nothing inside this file right now. This file is going to do all the work of checking the session. So anytime you work with a session, you want to start with session start. Uh, I added these other commands in here just to show you what they do. Session ID, 
this will retrieve for you the ID of the session if you ever want it. Session Regenerate ID will create a brand new ID. It'll create a brand new file. It copies the information into your file. So you've got a brand new session file. Session ID, yeah, we did that one. Session Destroy. This is if you want to delete that file. So I want to get rid of my session file. Session Destroy will do that. Session Unset will delete everything inside the file. It doesn't destroy the file, but it deletes all the values that are inside that session file. So these are useful for logout. We're going to use that in a minute for the logout. All we want to do in here is check and see if, hey, is that user ID variable? That's how we're going to know if they're logged in. So if is set, we're going to look to see if session user ID is set. If it's not set, that's when I want to kick them away. So we'll just put the exclamation mark in front of here. If not set, then header location public.php. Done. We have now protected this page. As soon as I refresh this, what's going to happen is private is going to load session.php. It's going to start the session, and then it's going to check to see, hey, do you have a user ID? No? OK, I'm sending you back to public. So we refresh the private page. Boom, we're back to the public page. Public page has got a session ID. When I click login, there we go. We've got a brand new session. The link shows up. If I click on the link, and we get to stay on the private page because on the private page, we do have this user ID. Cool. So let's add the login, and that's the last step in this whole process. So we're adding our link to our logout.php. There we go. There's our logout link. That's going to go to the logout page. Inside the logout page, we're dealing with sessions. So first step, as always, is to actually add the session start command so it will look for the file. Then, just to be safe, clear out the file, delete the file, and then I'm going to redirect the person back to the public page. On the public page, a new session will be created, and they can log back in if they want. So public.php is my location. There. All right, so clicking this link on the private page, this will take me to logout.php. This page finds the matching session, deletes everything inside the file, deletes the file, and then sends them back to the public page. On the public page, a new session should be created for them. So let's click Logout, and we're back to public. And the link to private is now gone because it was deleted. So the old cookie is still here with the reference. So B51, that's the old cookie. B51 is zero bytes. There's nothing inside that file at all. That's what the session destroy was. It broke that link. It cleared out anything that was inside there. All right. And that's the full cycle. So that's public page, how to log in, have something in the session that allows you to go to some place that's hidden. The hidden place, you want to do validation, make sure that that thing exists. Otherwise, you redirect them back. And the logout to delete the session, send the person back to the public page. All right, I will add links to all of these files as code gists for you in the comments below. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.